Right, which product is going to win the retarded product of the Century Award? Because Century's only 17 years old. So, well, there's a lot of contenders, isn't there? You know, batterizer, solar freaking roadways, and all sorts of stuff. But this one, I think, takes the cake. The sheer number of uh, the dollars that have been invested in this and just the sheer ridiculousness of the idea. Let's take a look, shall we? The winner is, drum roll, U-Beam. Now, if you haven't uh, seen it, I've done a blog post two years ago uh, debunking the U-Beam uh, concept, as have many others, including the uh, former Vice President of Engineering at U-Beam has <laughs> even debunked it. This is how bad it is, okay? Now, if you don't know what it is, it is uh, ultrasonic wireless power transfer. It's like Wi-Fi for charging. Woo, that gets all the investors juiced up, doesn't it? Yeah, it's going to be the energy infrastructure of the future. Oh, by the way, 28 million bucks. They sucked out of the investors for this boondoggle. Unbelievable. They reckon it's safe. Uh -uh. Uh, they, they reckon it can be used in buses, trains, planes, cafes, gyms, hotels, and stadiums. You can sit in a stadium, if I had my phone, here it is, sit in a stadium and big, huge stadium, and your phone magically charges. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, bullshit. Unbelievable. And it will power TVs without wires. You can sit TVs in the middle of the room and they just magically work. Woo! Pixie dust. Um, now, they were very secretive for a couple of years and then they finally revealed some stats. They've been working on this for like five years, okay? And they finally said, oh, we can do a four meter radius and, at, and we can charge a phone at 1.5 watts. Yeah, it's not nearly as good as USB can do, especially USB-C these days. You can wonder why anyone needs wireless charging at all, really, with how fast uh, modern chargers can actually go. And they release their specs for how much, what their transmit power is. 145 dB to 155 dB at 60 kilohertz SPL, sound pressure level. Now, we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, look, the power with ultrasound, in air, different mediums have different things. It drops off with a square of the distance, approximately, you know, um, 3 dB per meter. Nice round number. That's actually what it kind of is in air. So it, even if you're a one meter away, just with the air alone, no other losses, you lose 50%. It's only 50% efficient. And so at two meters, the efficiency is already 25% right off the bat before you start including. And that's assuming 100% efficient transducers, no non-linearities at 100% focused. By the way, um, if you have, if they've got an array like this, it's actually slightly bigger, a bit bigger than this, then they can actually turn on only parts of it and get a smaller aperture size and that will have a, a better natural, a different natural focus distance. And I believe with roughly the size of the transmitter they've got, it's about maybe a meter and a half guesstimate is the natural focus distance of that. It's beam forming as well, so they can do electronic beam forming to follow your phone. So they've got some very cool tech actually to locate where your phone is and then beam form. It's about a half second lag, which you can see in their video of following. So granted, they've got some cool tech, um, but let's just look, I mean, well, actually let's not. This has to be short. I could go into the numbers here. 145 dB to 155 SPL is like, uh, gives, we can basically get, maybe my estimate at a meter, you know, two meters, you might, yeah, you can get that one and a half watts. It's not a problem. And there's two ways to analyze this. One is with a continuous, uh, a fixed transmit power, and the other one is with a variable transmit power where they change the size of that transmit aperture and pump more energy in to maintain 1.5 watts at every distance, for example. That's their figure. Um, if they could charge quicker, they'd be boasting about it, but that's the best they could boast, 1.5 watts. It's, it's getting down towards trickle charging and it drops off with square distance, but it doesn't matter. This thing, no. It does not violate the law of physics, and yes, it does work. This thing can work. You can charge a mobile phone using ultrasound at several meters. It is possible, but the efficiency is down in the single digit percentage, and in practice, it's going to be possibly sub 
1% efficient because things it's affected by temperature, pressure, which is altitude, humidity, there's non-linear effects, there's saturation in the air because you're pumping in so much pressure, sound pressure level, that the atoms, just the molecules just go and they can't do it, like they just die, they saturate, poor little things and you know, you can't get you reach a saturation point. Anyway, we could go through the result. It doesn't matter. The numbers do not matter with this. I'll show you a whole bunch of stuff on another whiteboard where I've got some major points that just blow this thing right out of the water. Let's go. And by the way, I'll link in a video of the CEO of Ubeam. I challenge you to try and sit through all 15 minutes of it. Uh, it's really bad. Take it away, Meredith. For each technological hurdle deemed insurmountable by the experts, I would spend just a few hours thinking about the problem from a variety of approaches. So I was able to solve problems when the PhD experts couldn't with just a few hours of really simple research. Every single argument over why the technology couldn't work has been indisputably wrong. This taught me to be skeptical of experts, that expertise represented a narrow way of looking at things. Engineers are inherently linear thinkers and tend to take a very binary approach to solving problems. As a non-expert, I had an advantage because I could look at a problem from different angles because I just didn't know what was possible. By thinking outside the box, by thinking around corners, you can outthink the top thinkers. And now, eight months later, I have four of the top ultrasonic engineers in the world working for me, or working with me. <laughs> it's going to work, and it's going to be awesome. And I can't wait to give the middle finger and smile to all the engineers that criticize the crap out of me. <laughs> This is why U-Beam it will never work or any ultrasonic charging technology, why it's not practical. Let's go to number one, the efficiency. It's gonna be bad. As I said, if it's 1%, I'll eat my tinfoil hat at four meters. Like, give me a break. It's the worst efficiency charging technology by an order of magnitude on the market. Um, and remember, it's gonna be very bad for the planet. If everyone implemented this, the planet would be screwed. Energy usage, energy consumption is one of the biggest problems we have on this planet. You might know of the Energy Star legislation where it's actually uh, against the law to sell products in some countries that have uh, aren't very efficient chargers, mobile phones and things like that. They need a certain standby power, they need a certain efficiency, otherwise you're not allowed to sell them. The MEPS regulations, all that sort of stuff. So right there off the bat, this thing shouldn't have even made it past the first concept. It's just the efficiency. Who's going to want this? It's just ridiculous for the planet. Unbelievable. Anyway, cost. The cost. You need hundreds of these transducers that can do the 145 to 155 dB SPL in this thing and for the transmitter, hundreds and hundreds of them and you need maybe a hundred of them for a phone size thing. If we've got like a hundred of these things on the back of a phone and these are already sold in massive volume at in, for the automotive industry, they're several dollars each. Yeah, you might be able to pick them up on AliExpress for like 50 cents or something, but there's no way that Willy Wonka's transducer factory is going to churn out transducers of this, uh, you know, capability and efficiency for anywhere near a practical consumer cost. It's just ridiculous. You need so many of them. Ah, oh, and we'll compare that with the competition in a minute. Size. How thin can you make these things? Really, you can't. Look at their design. They've spent five years on this, tens of millions of dollars in development, and they've got a brick, an actual a big brick, which um, they, you know, you have to hold in a certain direction. Like, it's got to be flat on to the thing. There's a reason they hold it like that. Crazy. Nobody's going to want that. There's no way it's ever going to get thin enough, thinner than a Qi charger that we'll look at. It's just right off the bat there. Uh, it's gone. And safety and legality. Let's have a look at that. They, on their website, it's all about safety, and, uh, but most countries actually have either legislation or recommended uh, safe levels of 110 dB SPL. So U-Beam is up to 3,000 times higher than what almost every country recommends as a safe limit for ultrasonics. And, like, it's ridiculous. Don't let them convince you otherwise on the website. It's just bullshit and waffle. Now, five, and this is the face palm. This is where it should never have made it off the bloody napkin. You come up with the idea, oh, ultrasonic phone charging. Okay, let's on the back of the napkin. Let's see how pre feasible this is. People 
put and use phones face up on a surface. So you've got all your receiver transducers on the back. Eh, in a cafe, which is one of their big usage scenarios, the thing's not going to charge at all. Zero. It's ridiculous. And people hold them in their hands at odd angles like that. Once you tilt it like that, you'll notice that they hold them in their demo perfectly like that with their fingers. Wow. Of course it's going to work. But when you, like, people hold them like that at angles and when it's their hands on the back, you've lost half your transducer area anyway. It's ridiculous. And people store them in their bloody Pockets, bloody modern huge phones, it barely fits in my pocket. But they store them in their pockets, their bags, where it's absolutely useless. They're in, right there, off the bat, it should not have been funded or made it off the back of a bloody napkin. It's just not a practical uh, charging environment. And let's compare it with the competition, the Qi charger. My phone has a Qi charger already built in, wireless charging. It's already built into most, a good lot of the phones on the market. It's called uh, Qi, and it's already built in, and it's very efficient, upwards of 50% efficient. Pretty good, order of magnitude better than U-Beam will ever be at its best. Uh, and it's cheap. You can buy one of the charging pads for five bucks on eBay delivered. Delivered to your home. Like, it's, there is no competition. There's no way that Willy Wonka's transducer factory is going to churn out these things for anywhere near the cost of what the Qi charger and the thinness of a Qi charger with the coil in there, a tiny little slither of a coil, and uh, just the controller charger chip to go with it. You be there. It's just every one of these points is a showstopper. It's just dumbest idea ever. Anyway, that wins the retarded product of the century, decade, year, whatever. It's pretty dumb. And just a quick follow-up to this, I just found a video uh, from USA Today that actually shows a close-up detail of the real tech. Now, let's actually take a look at it. I didn't realize this, but they seem to have two different prototypes. This one, look, there's over at like 1,100 uh, transducers on there to transmit this thing. Anyway, this one, uh, this little compact one, desktop one, does not seem to be beamforming. Check out the pattern on the LED. It's just, it's not following at all. It's just outputting like that. And then down in the basement here um, is this gigantic beast. Look at it. And this is their beamforming one. So they've got two different prototypes. And this is the one that does all the tracking. You can see um, the NVIDIA Jetson. I think it is bought up there, which is doing uh, the camera visual uh, tracking to actually track these phones. How's it doing that? Is it like got an infrared transmitter on there? I'm not sure. But look at the size of the brick they've got. It's absolutely huge. But hey, granted, this is good tech. They're actually you know, it's, it's really cool tech, but they've got two different prototypes there. So that one, the massive, probably massively huge and inefficient. Look, it's, there's the size of the brick. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> it's just enormous. But yeah, two different types, the beam forming one and then this, you know, dog and pony show desktop one. So yeah, they're just, even if all of this worked, they've just got no hope. So this is after almost 30 million bucks in investment, five years or whatever it's been now, and they're not even close to making this practical. Not that it can be practical, as I've explained, and the Qi charge has been around forever. It is dirt cheap. It's infinitely many orders of magnitude cheaper to build a Qi charger into a Starbucks coffee table than it is to have this boondoggle uh, transmitter up on the ceiling on the wall to just charge a couple of phones. That costs thousands and thousands of dollars at minimum just because of the transmitters and all the tech. And even it wouldn't work because the phone's sitting on the table like, Arr! and you know, the Starbucks and all the other cafes and stuff haven't even uh, implemented the cheap and simple Qi charger. So if they haven't implemented those yet, or they're on a very small scale, th this thing has absolutely no chance. It is dead in the water. These investors have been sucked out of their money. They'll never see a cent in return. If they were the, they would have been, they should have realized this years ago and they should have pivoted uh, to some other niche uh, tech because they've got some cool tech, right? And no doubt they've got some, you know, interesting stuff, but it's no use for the application that they're talking about, the wireless uh, consumer phone or other gadget charging. It, it's a, there's a zero, zero percent chance, not even a slight chance, zero percent chance this will ever make it to market. They should have just pivoted. Uh, like, 
some niche tech. I, unbelievable. But no, they had a vision 